welcome, as usual, to the Geek Lab. Now, let's say you've had one of these Amiga 1200s or Amiga 500 or Amiga 500 Plus or any Amiga in the Amiga line. You've had it for years or you've just acquired one. Congratulations! That also means you've inherited these things. Da, 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 da. These are the Amiga floppy disks, which look like a normal PC floppy disk, but they're not. These are the evil cousin of the IBM floppy disk. Because on the Amiga, they put data tracks right on the edge. Which means that these, especially in my case, are very prone to failing. Now I know there are people out there who've had no trouble with these, but I also know a lot of people, a lot more people, who've had endless trouble with these. So, get rid and replace with something like this. This is what is known as a GoTech virtual drive. These are originally designed for old PCs, but they have been uh, firmware corrected and now work with the Amiga. Now when you buy one of these, which are not expensive, you have two options. You can either go with the generic PC one and upgrade the firmware yourself, uh, in which case you'll need to watch a different tutorial video on that because I've not done that. Or, like this one, you can buy one that's already been prepared for you for a little bit more money. But if you're not technical, this is what I'd advise. So what is it? Well, it's what it says on the box. It's a virtual drive. As far as the Amiga is aware, this is a floppy drive. You can actually mount them inside to replace the floppy drive. And then into this goes a USB key which holds all your software. Then you can use this device to select uh, the disks which you have in there and load them up to the Amiga. We'll show you how to do that. Uh, we'll show you how the interface works and all that. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to put it in. Easy peasy part. Let's just take that out. First of all, <coughs> if you haven't already, you'll need to take the top off your Amiga, which involves removing the screws underneath. If you just slide the keyboard out, Remove the top so you don't damage these cables, as has happened on this one in the past. Uh, you're now half access to these ports here. Now, on the GoTech itself, you will see. I adjust my lights. Jump, some jumper settings up here. My lights got a floppy on. Hang on. <coughs> right up here. I shall probably put a photograph here. You'll see jumper settings. This jumper needs to be on S0, which is the same as floppy drive 0, the default boot floppy drive for the Amiga. So if you stick that on there before you do anything else. This one has already had the cables removed, but normally there'll be cables running to the Amiga's floppy drive. Take them out to the back of the Amiga's floppy drive. In this case, you can either buy these or with some kits like the one I bought, these come with it already. Put the ribbon cable, red, red wire on the right hand side there, and that goes to the left hand side. So, like, so uh, you can actually see on this one there's a little notch at the bottom there to show you where the cable goes in. So facing the back, uh, the red goes into the left hand side. Ta -da. You also need power. So for power, <coughs> mine came with an extender. Uh, these can only go in one way, so very difficult to screw up. But on this particular model, this seems a bit fragile, so be careful when pushing it when you don't push push that off the board. But it just clips on there, only one way it can go. So that's sorted. Now you can either Disconnect these again and run them through the floppy drive hole itself across the case, which I found left this at a strange angle and actually unusual. Or you can do what I did and just run them out the back. And then the drive just flips over and sits on the top of the case. 
which I will show you right now. And there you can see it sits happily on top of the case. Uh, so, what we're going to do next is show you how to get some software onto the stick and we're ready to play some games or use some applications. Right, so next job is to get the software onto the memory stick. Now, one just if you just plug it into your PC, one piece of software you are going to need is this one called selector.adf. And that is basically your file, file browser for the Amiga. You'll see that in use in a short while, but you'll need to download that. I've got a couple of links uh, I'll put in the description below uh, as to where you can go and get that. Now, as you can see, games themselves or software are sorted here. So, Super Hang On is just a single disk, so it just sits in the root directory. <coughs> multiple uh, games with multiple disks have their own directories there. So, if uh, I've just chosen a random game just to demonstrate, if I if I get a new folder eventually, new folder and Ghostbusters. I've acquired both the disks, so if I double click on the raw file, uh, and close, and just drag across the ADF file that opens up and copy it into that directory. And there's the second file. It has been a pain today. There we go. Close. And copy that across. There we go. Once you've got your selector.adf and the selection of games that you want, that's it. You can now take that out to your PC and insert it into uh, the, the GoTech virtual drive, which is what we'll do next. Right, when you start the Amiga, it may be the case that it doesn't start on slot 000, which is the browser. So, if you just hit the buttons here to select 000, restart the system with Control A A, it will reboot. And here we are on the main screen. See the system booting, and this will now go onto the file browser, which will allow you to select disks and put them into virtual disk drives just be a few moments here we go into the main screen right so let's say I want to play Batman all I do is go down to my Batman directory select it and in there you'll see the uh, <coughs> two disk files that are involved in the Batman game so if I go down to the first one select it We'll then go to this screen, and each of those numbers on the left hand side represent disk drives. So 001 would represent uh, physical disk drive 1, 002 represents physical disk drive 2. So I'm going to put disk 1, I've already been playing the game there, so I'm going to put disk 1 into, into physical disk drive 1. So just go down, press enter, and it swaps it over. And then select disk 2, and I can put that into disk 2. Uh, all I usually do at this point is go to the, next, the clear space, press that, and then it takes you to the disk drive allocation. Go up, save and reset. The system will now reset, and with any luck, it will boot the, back, the game Batman. And here we go, Batman the game, based on the movie sort of thing. Okay, so if you were to reset the system from this point on, it would boot that Batman game again. So if you want it, now select another game. All you do is press the down arrow, go to 000, reboot the system. That will go back to the menu where you can select discs. If it asks you to insert like disc 2 or disc 3, that's the one it's booted off disk 1. If that's just for disk 2, press disk 2. Sometimes it'll pick it up automatically or press a key, mouse button, joystick. And then when it asks you for disk 3, you just press the up arrow, select disk. Well, there's only two disks in this one, but you will go to disk 3, do the same again. 
and that's how you do it. And if it's asking you to insert disc one again, just go down disc one, press button, and off it goes. And it's that simple. And you can kiss goodbye to those evil floppy discs. So, if you've got any comments, uh, please leave them below. Please thumbs up if you like, thumb down if you don't like, but don't tell anybody else. And subscribe if you haven't and want uh, any more videos like this. Hopefully with a less rough voice because I will have recovered a bit more. Uh, so, thank you all. Social media down in the description as well, if you want Facebook and interact more, stuff like that. So, thank you all very much. You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>